For Cremo Media's Policy, I'm Sash Nimali. Joining me today to unpack Action SA's 2024 election manifesto is party leader Herman Mashaba. As we head into a crucial election, Action SA has set out plans to fix South Africa across various areas. And one of these areas, one of the most crucial that is holding back the economy, is energy. So what is Action SA's plans in that regard? Well, I think as far as energy is concerned, uh, one needs to, we need to be bold uh, enough uh, to uh, professionalize ESCOM in the first place, stop uh, the rot of corruption that has destroyed uh, that entity, but more importantly, allow the private sector participation, allow competition uh, in, in, into the sector. And uh, I think uh, two weeks or so ago, I went um, uh, to go and hand a memorandum to the Minister of Minerals and Energy. And one of the, the nine-point plan in terms of turning um, South Africa around to bring, uh, to have uh, reliable electricity, uh, make sure that you can have um, regional grids. And the reason why I'm saying so is because uh, there's a practical experience of a municipality in Frankfurt, in the Free State. Uh, this particular municipality over 20 years ago could not, they were unable to collect even 25% of revenue from electricity, put out a tender, private sector won this tender over 25 years. Today, this municipality, through the private sector participation, they collect up to 85% uh, of electricity. They generate 75% of their own electricity. They can actually, if it is not because of the reluctance of uh, ex-com and, and the South African current ANC government, they they capable of actually producing 100% electricity. They don't have to rely on on ESCOM. But unfortunately, this uh, government, firstly, they are trying to. Um, to renege on this contract because obviously the comrades they've now seen they see an op an opportunity uh, uh, to destroy the set so they want to find a way to conduct uh, instead of assisting other municipalities use uh, this particular um, uh, exercise as a template for the, the entire country where municipalities can produce their own electricity so that uh, you take the strain out of uh, ESCOM. So these are some of the plans that are practical. Make sure that uh, ESCOM must uh, compete on a commercial basis and us as government will not uh, keep on uh, bailing them out. Uh, yes, in the beginning, put in a, t a professional team, deal with uh, the, the corruption, but they must run on a commercial basis, but immediately, as I say, allow the private sector participation in competing with ESCOM. The party punts a basic monthly grant, but it also wants to get rid of a broad reliance on grants. How could this be achieved? Well, I think uh, you, you can't really get your society to be dependent on government. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows how I despise socialism and communism because those systems, they take away the dignity of human beings. South Africa today is sitting with uh, one of the highest sustainable unemployment rate in the world because this government... Um, obviously, without saying it openly, uh, I'm, I'm one person who believe people what they do, not what they say. This government, I've said this uh, more than 20 years ago, that uh, I have a sense that uh, this uh, NC government wants to keep black people poor and dependent on the state, and that's exactly what's happening. What we are saying is, because of the high levels of un unemployment, uh, because of uh, uh, lack of um, uh, economic ag activity, on a short-term basis, you can't just really dump uh, those people, so you've got to assist them. But at the same time, what you do, kickstart economic activity deal with uh, labor, uh, revise our draconian labor laws, free them to make sure that people can uh, uh, can employ those who want to work. Well, all these factories that are closed, Babeleji, uh, Harangua, Kwandebele, give them to the private sector to employ our people and those that want to work. In that case, what will happen? We will immediately, what we as Action SA are, uh, are saying, we are prepared uh, in the first few years, uh, commit in assisting those who need help, regardless of those who are unemployed uh, to, with, the, uh, with the stimulus. But what we want South Africans to judge us on is how many people we will um, take off um, 
government dependence on, on the grant system because when people work, uh, they will have the dignity instead of actually relying on government. Instead of whether as, as government we can give them uh, 2,000 or whatever amount uh, every month, people will earn a better salary working in a factory, having the dignity where their children see them wake up in the morning, go to work, end of the month, they're able to provide for themselves. So what we are saying as Section SA, we, that is uh, really our plan, where uh, within the first uh, five years of South Africans give us, giving us the mandate to be in government, we've already, our economic desk has already done a study that uh, within the first five years, we will be able to produce something like 4.8 million jobs in this country. But you don't just really produce uh, jobs uh, by just talking. Make sure that you stimulate economic growth. To um, relax the labor laws, uh, to allow the private sector to hire people uh, um, who want to work. And if they cannot afford them, make it easy to part uh, their ways. Revive um, these uh, factories that are closed down, give a massive in, in, uh, incentive uh, to those that wants to invest. But more importantly, to uh, be tough on crime because uh, there's just no way that uh, you can ever grow an economy in an environment of chaos. So you've got to do too many things at the same time to get the economy go going. You can't just really say, I'm going to get the economy going by fixing ESCOM. <laughs> yes, you can fix ESCOM, have electricity, but once uh, you, as long as you have this draconian labor laws, as long as you've got high levels of crime where uh, the 80 plus people are being murdered each day in this country, where we are seeing genocide, uh, our women, every 11 minutes a woman is raped in this country. So you've got to do all these things at the same time. It is for that reason, a few weeks ago, for the first time in the history of a democratic South Africa, I was open to South Africans to say, give Action SA the mandate, here's the cabinet. I don't know if you're, you're, you're head side of that. When you look at the kind of um, um, South Africans I'm presenting to the voters to really be the cabinet, unlike right now with this government that's, that has run this country down, every time they put criminals not into parliament, uh, even uh, in, in, into cabinet. I've, I've presented uh, people who will really be the, the cabinet. Cabinet of the under 20, I've presented uh, 20 ca cabinet ministers with not a single uh, uh, deputy. We, what we need uh, deputies for? You can imagine that saving, 20 billion, 20 plus billion rands of savings that you, uh, by reducing the cabinet. That money must go into infrastructure development, go and revive uh, these factories, uh, give them to the private sector. Crime is a major issue, particularly for South African women and children. Uh, how will Action SA make the country safer? Well, I think uh, the crime is really one of uh, the factors uh, destroying our economy. As Action SA, we believe uh, very strongly in, uh, in, in uh, making sure that uh, the, the head of the police, um, the police are led by ethical leaders. Unlike right now, uh, you look at the current minister of police, supposed to be in jail. Uh, we, we know uh, his involvement uh, uh, in criminal activities in the past. So you need uh, ethical leadership uh, to lead the police. You need proper training for the police. You need specialized units. You need the scorpions back. You need um, maiden robberies uh, the, the, the units. So like in the past, we had uh, Brixton maiden robbery. You know, those days, um, uh, criminals, you murder someone, your case um, gets taken by the Brixton maiden robbery squad. I can tell you, criminals will go and end themselves uh, in, in, in the police. So we need specialized units. To, you rape a woman in this country, I can tell you, um, we find you. She, you will ever regret ever having, uh, ever actually touching a woman. We want the women in this country, or all South Africans, to really be able to walk the streets any time of the day without fearing another human being. That's why we are saying all these heinous crimes, murder, corruption, drug dealers, and rapists, no parole for them. If uh, you will take you to, we'll have specialized courts to deal with this ma with this ma cases. And within the first five years, we'll, we'll have to have 24-hour courts to operate. All these retired uh, people in the in the legal profession, uh, we want to bring them back. We have 24-hour courts. 
you murder someone, police uh, catch you within as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you must uh, the, the, you must be given an opportunity to appear in a court of law. You get get sentenced to life imprisonment. It's going to be life imprisonment. You get sentenced to 25 years. It's going to be 25 years. We want to to, to ensure that. Cases of corruption must carry a minimum of 15 years with no parole, so that people must understand. And more importantly, as under Action SA, all these heinous criminals are not going to get the free accommodation and free meals. What we want them to do with no parole, but moreover, we want them to go and work for society. We, uh, they must work in the farms and uh, everywhere where they can obviously be of use to society, pay, pay, pay back to society. We are not going to have prisoners uh, performing games, gangs during the day, uh, being, after being sentenced uh, during the day, they have got nothing to do. There is not going to be television. On a Monday to Friday uh, from 8 o from eight o'clock up to five o'clock, we don't want to see any prisoner in, in the cells that must be out there in the farms working to pay back to society and paying back, um, providing for their own uh, accommodation in the mills. The party also says corruption needs to be redefined. Why and what processes will you put in place to detect and prevent corruption in government? To stop corruption uh, in any sphere of society is to have consequences. People commit a crime where they, they, there, are no, uh, there are no consequences, like what's happening right now in our, in our country over the last 20, uh, 30 years of this corrupt and patriotic government. There are no consequences. That's why we, we, we need um, to bring the Scorpions back, whether we call them the Scorpions, but it must be a Chapter 9 institution that operates independent of political interference. For us as Section SA, we propose when we have this institutions. Uh, the leadership of this uh, cannot really be appointed by the president. We look at, uh, for an example, right now, we have a president who deals in money laundering, putting money under mattresses and so forth, and he's the one who must really decide uh, um, who must be prosecuted. I think uh, these units must operate independent of political interference. So we've got to change uh, legislation to understand that uh, these um, units uh, must be able to prosecute without any fear or favor. The party has faced some controversy when it comes to migration. What is the party's stance, um, particularly on tackling illegal immigration, something for which you've been called xenophobic? Well, uh, we are unapologetic about this. I think I've been really very clear from the 1st of December 2016 when I was the mayor of the city of Johannesburg. I don't want to live in a country where there's one undocumented South African. As I'm talking to you right now, there's a woman giving birth, uh, a South African woman giving birth uh, to a child. Immediately upon delivery, uh, this child must have a birth certificate. By law, it's not something that you do because it's a nice thing to do. Our youth uh, today, um, when they turn 16, they must get an ID document. As I'm talking to you, there's someone dying. Upon uh, this person being certified dead, there must be a death certificate uh, uh, issued. I cannot understand people who are saying we must allow people of the world to come here and we must not ask them to really be documented. This country was built at the back of migrants and we must continue doing this. We must have red carpets for people of the world to come here, to come and invest, to come and holiday, to come and live here, but they must come here legally and when they are here, they must respect the laws of our country. Anything outside that is unacceptable. You come into our country illegally, you commit crime, we will not hesitate to send you back to your country after saving uh, the term in jail. You come into our country, you don't qualify to be here, you brought, uh, you brought a crime into our country, we'll take you through the normal court processes. Whatever sentence you get, you will save that sentence and immediately on the day of uh, finishing your sentence will send you back to your country where you came from. Education is another area that doesn't fare well in South Africa and Action SA says a single Department of Education is needed. How will this help? 
Absolutely. We are, we've been really very clear really about uh, education in this country. It was one of the core values uh, after going through the process called the People's Dialogue. One of the core values was quality education. We propose one department of education. Um, no union, uh, you can be SATU, you can be COSATU, anyone will never have a veto right on, on our education policy. Principals of schools are going to be appointed by us as government. The only people who uh, we will consult is the community being served by that principal. Not, no union will ever decide to become a principal. Say, thirdly, we will introduce school inspectors. I, I find it totally unacceptable for unions and this current government says they cannot have uh, uh, school inspectors. Look at um, the level of education our kids are receiving in this country, the worst in the, w in, in the world. And then the, at the same time, you say you don't want uh, you, uh, the school inspectors. It is precisely the reason why more than 20 years ago I started uh, raising bells to South Africans that this ANC government wants to see black people poor and educated and it, uh, this is what's really happening. So we want school inspectors and they don't need anyone's permission to visit a particular school. Every single day they go to different schools to ensure that school principals and the teachers do what they are, uh, they are paid to do um, by government. More importantly you know, I keep telling people I started school in 1966 until uh, matric before going to university. Every morning before we start school, we go to assembly with the principal, uh, the teachers. There's a reflection on asking for God's blessing. We will not force um, kids coming from parents who don't believe in God. But one thing that uh, we are convinced as section is saying, 98 plus percent of South Africans believe in God in one form or another. I'm a Christian and a proud one for that matter. There's a Muslim, Jewish, Hindu and other religions, but ultimately all of us believe in, in, in God. And that's less than 2% of, of uh, atheists in South Africa who don't believe uh, in, uh, in, in, in God. Their children can go to class, we'll find them there, but they are not going to determine and prescribe to us that South Africa is a secular state and we cannot uh, ask for God's blessing. We will bring God back into our schools and in, into the lives of South Africans. With that, you will see the explosion of, um, of uh, education in this country. And we will put emphasis on maths and science because without uh, putting emphasis on maths and science, not at 30%, if, even if the minimum pass rate will be 50% and we will get our kids to aim for more because we will invest uh, in, in the right type of teachers and the right type of uh, in the environment that is going to encourage uh, our kids um, uh, to, to value education. And our focus is not only going to really be to, with academic teaching, we, we need plumbers, we need technical the, the, the training, we need plumbers, electricians and so forth. And our education also, what's important, it's not going to start at university level. We are going to invest um, as government in uh, early childhood development centers. We want every child in this country, by the time they start the norm their normal school, they must have gone through uh, ECD centers. Uh, ECD centers not places where parents leave their children when they go to school. It must be an environment uh, where all the, the ECD centers are, are accredited and we will work and uh, invest in ensuring that uh, there are the right type of uh, facilities where children can really, we start stimulating their brains at the, the, the early stage. So that by the time they reach 10, unlike today where the kids are the, 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 uh, at 10 year old, 80% in public schools cannot re read for meaning. We want our children, by the time they reach uh, um, uh, 10 years of age, their masters uh, in, in, in maths and science to really prepare them for the future that they've got uh, ahead of them. Now your party has come out strongly against cater deployments. So how will you ensure that people you trust are in key government positions? 
Well, uh, fortunate enough, I had an opportunity to be the mayor of the city of Johannesburg uh, for three years, and uh, I'm sure you rem South Africans will remember that. Two weeks after taking over, I took all the senior uh, ANC cadres, because they're the ones who were all in senior positions, took them on a week uh, uh, workshop where we agreed to. Uh, we came out with what it was known as uh, is known as as a ten point plan. In that ten point plan, one of uh, um, aspects that I wanted them to commit on was on uh, on uh, uh, skills audit, where we must make sure that people are not in position are, are in position not because of who they know. People must be in position because of what they know, and um, we ran that program. Some people ran before uh, we could even embark on, on this. Some of them who we found to, to, to be in the wrong position and were prepared to be moved to other departments where they, they can perform, they accepted. And those that needed to be trained would really obviously train them. But we will not accept um, to employ people on the basis of anything else except merit. And we are not going to discriminate against South Africans. You are not going to, to employ South Africans, give them positions because or they are of a particular gender or race. It, the people will get jobs on the basis of um, the skills that they will provide. Because if you don't do that, who suffers are poor South Africans. Action SA is part of the multi-party charter, which could form a coalition government if the ANC falls below 50% in the national election. Um, what role is your party expecting to play in such a coalition government? And how would you promote policy positions? Look, I think uh, as South Africans, honestly, I urge all of us uh, to accept that ANC is not going to have 50%. I think, honestly, it's, a, it's not a worthwhile debate to have. It is, well, let's discuss uh, how far below 50% they will fall. But uh, there's no way ANC is going to really uh, have majority in this country. That, that, that subject matter, I'm not prepared to debate because uh, ANC is not going to get 50%. We're part of the multi-party charter. Uh, but for us as Action SA, when we go out and campaign, we go and campaign for people to give us outright majority. Will we get it? We accept. Um, um, that South Africa has entered an era of coalition. And in a coalition environment, it means compromise. And you leave your arrogance out. You look at the bigger picture. I had an opportunity that three years run a seven-way coalition arrangement. And why Johannesburg, under my leadership, was the most stable arrangement? Because I respected all the parties prepared to really work uh, with me. And. Um, South Africans can trust Action SA under our leadership that uh, we've got an experienced uh, leader uh, to respect other political parties. It is for that reason that we're asking South Africans make us the biggest uh, party in the event we don't get outright majority so that uh, we can lead uh, this coalition because we understand that under uh, a coalition arrangement we would not really be able to um, implement all our policies. We've got to accommodate all other parties so that it's a coalition arrangement that works for South Africa, don't work uh, for one political party. Lastly, we've seen a rise in political parties in South Africa ahead of the elections. Uh, why should voters vote for Action SA when there are so many alternatives to choose from? I think South Africans must accept that we live in a constitutional democracy. If Action SA um, 29th of uh, August 2020 can launch a political party, I think uh, it would be unfair, it would be unconstitutional for anyone to uh, reject other political formation of other political parties. South Africans, you, uh, today if you're not AP, you have a co you've got a constitutional right to go and start your own political party. But at the end of the day, it's up to the voters uh, to decide on the manifestos of political parties. Uh, just to quickly share with you the values of Action, uh, action SA, which are not uh, negotiable. 2.4 million South Africans gave us the mandate to, to start these political parties with these core values. Core values of an unracial South Africa. So if you are looking for a racial party, please go somewhere. Don't come and waste your time because we don't want to waste yours. South Africa, 2.4 million South Africans 
gave us the mandate and South Africans are yearning to have a, a non-racial party. South Africans uh, wanted a political party uh, that believes in free market economy, not a political party that uh, wants to drive the economy. Our role as government is to create a conducive environment, allow the private sector to be the one driving the economy. Action SA believe in social justice. As much as yes, we want this, uh, non-racial South Africa, we believe in free market economy, but we believe in social justice. I don't want to live side by side with poverty because poverty is a man-made uh, phenomenon. So we need to uplift uh, the poor. And as privileged ones, let's work together to uplift the poor. We don't want to work like a communist, where a communist says, no, we must go down. We as Section SA, we believe uh, in equal opportunity, not equal out, 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 outcome. We believe in the rule of law, and I've really shared with you what we'll do in the event that we are given the mandate. We believe in quality education, and I've already shared this uh, with you. We believe in ethical leadership. We believe uh, if you want to be a member of Action SA, you want to save uh, public, uh, you want to be a member of uh, public service, please, put the interest of society ahead of your own stomach. And that is those values, we stand by them. You can look at our constitution. It is for that reason that anyone joining Action SA, not believing in this value system, our constitution allows us uh, to get rid of you before you even enter the door. That was Action SA leader Haman Mashaba unpacking his party's 2024 election manifesto.